Now, we're going to shift here for a moment. Uh, Brenda, uh, are you there? Yes, I am. Ah, hello, Brenda. Okay. So we're gonna we're shifting here for, for a moment. Uh, you had you had a really interesting experience. In fact, I'm gonna put it on our newsletter here eventually because you wrote me a letter about it. But t tell us tell us what happened. Tell us what you had a message from the unseen therapist. Talk about that, could you? It, it was our, our first meeting in our uh, practice group for the first time and because we started alphabetical, I got to be in the hot seat first. And um, I chose my COPD, which has been a pretty intense problem for me for about five years. Okay, and so I have done. For those who don't know it, COPD is a severe breathing problem. I just simplified it, but correct? Yeah, all right, go ahead, I'm sorry. So uh, that was the target um, of our attention and focus. And um, I did, I, to give the group members a little background and a visual of where it takes place, my earliest memory of being breathless or struggling for air was when I was four. And so I gave them that little scene and, and our host, uh, Norma, said, okay, well, let's get started and um, we'll, we'll focus on um, Brenda being four, uh, struggling for breath and uh, feeling all alone, which is a word I had used. And I, and that was a true part of this, uh, a good element in the scenario. It was the last thing Norma said before we all went quiet and uh, started the session with the unseen therapist. She said, and Brenda feeling all alone. <laughs> I closed my eyes and went to my loving moment and brought in the unseen therapist and all that kept ringing to me was that phrase and Brenda feeling all alone. And that's all there was for me in the scene. And, and all of a sudden I heard just as clear as I can hear Gary, I heard the unseen therapist say, you were never alone. I was there with you. And it was, the first time I've ever heard an audio. I mean, usually I like sense things or I feel things. I've never heard her speak before. Now, and I'm saying her because Gary, when I told him this, asked, could I tell, was it a familiar voice? Was it a male or female? It was neither. It was not male or female. I, I, well, I couldn't sense it. And it was not a voice I recognized, but it could not have been more clear. And the soothing, calmness, loving feeling I felt after hearing that uh, was really beyond. I'm not really great with words and descriptions, but it's way over the top for me. I really can't tell you how amazing it felt okay. to have that. All right, and thank you, Brendan. And to me, that's a, a uh, version of a spiritual experience that some of our members are having as a result of this. Now, just because you don't have this kind of a thing, you know, this kind of a direct message or feelings or whatever does not mean you're failing in this course. Okay? <laughs> it means you got lucky. <laughs> That's what it means. Okay? I'm ready to hear. <laughs> <laughs> at this, at this early them. stage. We've had people who at the very early, like Ann Ryan, who was here last time, was talking about uh, during the early stages, she would get some like warm feelings and things like that uh, with unseen therapists, but more recently, no, she, it's just more like she's just having a conversation. It's like, it's like two equals are, are having their conversation and one's helping the other kind of, kind of thing. So I want to unload that a bit, but I also want to say these things are possible and that's where we're going okay? is towards that kind of thing. So, my understanding, Brenda, is you also, as a result of this, had some improvement in your oh, yeah. COPD. Talk about that, could you? Yeah, because what I had described to the group about the predominant discomfort or uh, anxiety I had about the breathing, it may seem that not being able to breathe should be an obvious angst, but it felt like an oval-shaped filter that was clogged right in the middle of my chest. 
So recovering from exertion was very strenuous, like trying to breathe through a clogged up filter. And after this, after we came out of that session with the unseen therapist, that was just completely gone. That, that, that sense, that congestion, that restriction, if you will, was gone right there, right then. And, and it has, it's still gone. <laughs> it's still gone. It and hasn't come was, back at all. That was a week or two ago by now? or how That was a week was? ago today, actually. We could go today. Our group meets on Sunday morning. Yeah, okay. We could go today. Okay, well, good. And then, thank you for that. And and you, you wrote me this morning asked me, asking me other questions, so fire away, would you? All right, well, I was, I was roaming around in EFT land <laughs> on the website and listening and, you know, the newsletter videos and stuff, and I was listening to Gary talk about um, how he happened to mention in a talk that he used to take blood pressure medicine and that now he doesn't. And my question to Gary this morning was uh, a couple things. One, you know, did you, did you focus on working on the blood pressure issue? Did it happen like that? Did you, um, did it happen gradually? Um, I think there was a third question there too. I think I had a third question, but I was quite curious about how you noticed or did you focus or was it like a side benefit of something else? Um, well, when you when I looked at your questions, I had to think about because it's been a while. I I haven't been on on blood pressure meds for a few years actually, so I had to go back and think about what I what I did. And while I was concerned about the blood pressure, I, mean, I had to take medication for it. It was like like one sixty over a hundred or something. I mean, it's pretty far up there. Okay, um, so I was taking the medication and all that. I don't remember um, aiming unseen therapists at blood pressure. Now, blood pressure is a symptom, we understand. It's not a cause. It is a symptom of a deeper emotional cause. So I may have brought in unseen therapists a time or two aiming at the symptom of it, and I, but I just don't recall. Well, I think I probably did, but I, I don't have any really specific memories of it. But more the bigger thing that was happening to answer your question it was it was more gradual because i am forever involving myself with the unseen therapist working with other people working with myself and so on and one of the things i began to notice as that happened over time is while i was taking my blood pressure medication i would be like sitting down someplace reading a book or sitting at my you know playing on the computer and i would stand up and I would feel dizzy. And, and that's a sign that my blood pressure is too low. Okay? <laughs> and it would just kept happening. I just, I just stand up and then put my hands on my knees and go like, you know, bow down a little bit so I didn't faint. And I finally figured out that's because my blood pressure was dropping and the blood pressure medication was exaggerating <laughs> the problem <laughs> in the other direction. <laughs> So, you know, I talked to the doctor and I just, after a month or two, I just weaned off it and I haven't seen it since. And my blood pressure today is, oh, it goes up and down a little bit, but it's, it's uh, generally speaking in the, oh, 125s to 130s around 70, 75 or thereabouts. You know, it's a, it's a, I'm 80 now and it, you know, it's typically blood pressure tends to go up as the arteries harden and all that. But anyway. That's the answer. What? <laughs> what I? <laughs> that's a. That's a, an example of what we need to be doing ultimately with our course, and that is aiming at underlying emotional issues, which is what I'm doing all the time. And as we do that, the physical starts to fade. And that was just one of them. Okay. I have one little side note in our group this morning. Uh, we got to talking about the personal peace procedure and one of the benefits that I find because it's taken me years I know the personal peace procedure goes back to the gold standard you know mm -hmm. and we were all talking about how long it took us to get engaged with that and I noticed I, I've been quite quite adamant about sticking with it since optimal EFT because you mention it so often 
in the videos and the writings and everything. So I've been trying to stay on it. And the biggest part about it is when you go back, and I gave this example this morning, and when you go back and look at how things were when you started this journey, there's going to be some things you forgot. Like you'll see on the list maybe, I used to get migraines five a week or three a week. And you may read that list and go, geez, I can't remember the last time I had a migraine, you know. But you weren't thinking about it because it was gone now. Yeah, yes. And that, so yeah. it's, it's, it's a map on your path that, that it'd be a great map to show somebody who's saying, so what's it done for you? And you go, well, I don't know. It's done a lot of things. I can't think of anything. Well, you got a map right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a map right here and you can go say, oh, I got this and I don't have the allergy thing anymore and I don't, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it serves as that as well as many other things that you talked about, you know, as well. Yeah, and thank you for that. And I just want to emphasize that again, because because what, not every time, but what tends to happen here is we will take care of issues, but they get taken care of often so well that the client even forgets they ever had them, you know. And, and that's power. I mean, that's real power. Okay. I've seen that myself as well. And in fact, yeah. I think I shared that this morning uh, that people will say, well, that wasn't such a big deal. And I said, are you kidding me? You you couldn't even stand up straight when you got here. And now you said, well, the backache wasn't all that bad. Oh, I think it was because I wrote it down. Right here, yeah. you know? so, yeah. Happens a lot. Happens a lot.